Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name's Rodney Dupree and I have my assistant Carol with me and we are on our second season of the classes. This is class number four. It's the shrimp class. It's gonna be good, y'all. We got shrimp cocktail. We got fried shrimp. It's like bubble gump, huh? Oh, I know. Shrimp we got everywhere. shrimp and grits. We shrimp got shrimp potatoes. everything. Yes, it's, it's the shrimp, y'all. Y'all hang on. Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. Tide line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. All right, y'all, this is um, one of my favorite dishes, shrimp. And it's almost, it don't matter the way you cook them, it mm. depends on what you like, and there's 18 million ways to oh, cook shrimp. Yeah, absolutely. This could be the uh, Forrest Gump show with all the different I shrimps. I should have renamed it. Yeah. <laughs> should have renamed it. So, first, I want to talk about our sponsors. Okay. We have Capital City Produce, okay. which brought the produce. Love them. All Love right. them. We got a uh, Taft Clown Peter and Mike Fruget. They really, they really help us out a lot. Okay. And we still have French Settlement Sausage, and I yep. believe they're going to be with us to the end of the year because they like to eat too. All B right. Brad, um, he's a um, connoisseur of good food. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So first thing we want to do is ball shrimp, and from there we'll gather and get okay. things rolling here. And All I got right. the fire going, and you're going to start mm -hmm. putting some Ooh. shrimp in. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling that in my sinuses. I just yeah, it smells good it, in it here. It does I, smell good in here. You could put in, this you could put a sock in there, and it'd smell good. Oh my goodness, <laughs> yes indeed. So um, there's there's several things you want to do when you ball and shrimp. Over my years of balling, mm -hmm. uh, you're not seasoning the shrimp. What you're doing is seasoning the water. Okay. So it, it depends on how much water you put in mm -hmm. as to how much seasoning you put in. Gotcha. And most poop, most people use everything from Louisiana to um, Zatarans to mm -hmm. um, all types of boils. Uh, right. I've become to learn the old Chack Bay seasoning. What, what it is, they have less salt, and I'm going to tell you about that. Um, most of the time you get fresh shrimp, let's just say it's not shrimp season. You're not getting fresh shrimp. Mm -hmm. You're getting shrimp that was frozen, and they defrost them, and they selling you fresh shrimp. Well, there's a fine line in between there anyway, mm -hmm. but what what they do with these shrimp when they catch them fresh is to add salt and they brine these shrimp. Oh, okay. So that's what makes the peeling mm -hmm. stick to the shrimp. Really? So the more salt you add, mm -hmm. the, the more the peeling, the more, the, the more it's going to be sticking. And so oh. there's less salt in the Chag okay. Bay Never with an awesome that. flavor. You know, mm -hmm. you can ball up anything. It still has the spice and everything? Yes, it's just less salt in here. Gotcha. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, when you balling, like crawfish and mm -hmm. crabs, you know, when you balling, mm -hmm. and, and somebody maybe under 30 years old would be on their phone the whole time while they balling. <laughs> just saying, just saying. But when you balling shrimp, you uh -huh. have to actually pay attention to the shrimp. Okay. Okay. Once those shrimp come to a ball, mm -hmm. okay, you're going to be looking. You're going to be looking at that shrimp. You're going to be looking and where the shrimp curls on the back. Okay. The, the meat will come mm -hmm. away from the skin. And at that point, you've done. You know, mm -hmm. there are several things you can do. You can mm -hmm. pull it off, stop it, but you need to soak it, okay? Okay. So what you do is ice it. So okay. when you when the meat comes from the peeling, mm -hmm. put your ice in there and let it soak. And 
you can taste one after 10 minutes, five minutes and taste it. Mm -hmm. But um, And that's gonna make it easier to peel? Like especially, I guess, when it's coming away from that shell? Exactly, Okay. exactly. Gotcha. The easiest shrimp to peel mm -hmm. is a fresh shrimp because they have not been through the brine and the, right, all the so different salt. Yeah. Those are the easiest ones. I mean, okay. you, you ask somebody and they're going to tell you, you boil shrimp for two minutes. You know, you boil shrimp for four minutes. Well, mm -hmm. you you know, you better know where your shrimp come from so when you do that. it's not a time that. thing. It's, it's more of a, it's kind of an art. You have exactly. to really kind of watch it. Once okay. it starts to boil, mm -hmm. you know, it's... Yeah, so That's, it looks like this Once it comes off, off, you see it come off of there and you'll okay. see it's off. You done. You threw ball and you mm -hmm. now bring in the temperature down, mm -hmm. ice it, and let it soak. And you can, from the soaking, you can season it as much as you want through the soaking. Okay, okay. So that's, um, are, are we coming? We are getting we pretty to close to a ball, yeah, to a ball right here. A well, well um, let me tell you a little bit about shrimp. Okay. I got a broader definition of shrimp. Mm -hmm. um, Shrimp may be synonymous with prawns mm -hmm. covering stalk-eyed swimming crustaceans with long, narrow, muscular tails, long whiskers, and slender legs. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty deep right there. Yeah. There are thousands of species mm -hmm. adapted to a wide range of habitats. Okay, They live from one to seven years. Really? And, and I didn't know they lived I seven didn't know years. That either. Uh, I didn't either. They often live solitary mm -hmm. and they only form the large schools during the spawning season. Okay. Um, shrimp support a commercial industry worth over $50 billion oh, every yeah. year. Oh yeah, that's a big industry here. In 2010, the total commercial production of shrimp was nearly 7 million tons. Oh my gosh. I didn't know they had that many doggone I shrimp. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know though, I'm, I'm kind of not surprised. That's such a big industry here and it's so popular here. So the shrimp boil. Mm -hmm. All right, the or origin of the shrimp boil is mm -hmm. created or credited to Mr. Richard Gay, mm -hmm. who was a National Guardsman who had cooked for, who had to cook for a hundred soldiers, and he used the old family recipe. Okay, mm -hmm. the seafood boil started with the arrival of the Cajun people from the maritime regions of mm -hmm. Canada in the 1700s. Okay, that's, the, that's when the Cajuns, the Cajuns. came. All right. Um, What's in the seafood ball? Mm -hmm. It's dried bay leaves, allspice, coriander, mustard seeds, dill seeds, and red pepper flakes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do how long do you ball shrimp? Well, mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now. Now we balling. We balling. We okay. Rolling. You can get your spoon and go okay. to stirring it around and looking. All righty. Now people put all kinds of things in their boils. Um, mm -hmm. For instance. Today we took a can of pineapple, <laughs> put holes in it, yeah, put it in there and let it ball up. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm up with the latest fashions well, on balling because every year it's like somebody's like we're putting broccoli in, we're putting cauliflower in, we got a pig we're I, putting in I there. Know. You know, I've been to places they put a can of veg all in there. <sighs> I just uh, so you live so you and pull you learn. one of them up and look. Okay. As it see it's still tight right mm -hmm. there. And okay. in a minute, that's going to separate. So you'll really be and able that's to see when we'll that stop. separation? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Interesting. You will. Gotcha. Now that, um, so you and one more thing I want to say. Yep. Old Bay. Mm -hmm. You can ball your shrimp however you want. Mm -hmm. Sprinkle this Old Bay when you're done. Once you lay them out, sprinkle some Old Bay and put that over. Oh, it, it's another okay. little flavor. You know, if you're yeah. tired of the ones you've been doing all the time, sprinkle that on and it's just another little flavor. Okay. But, um. We actually went to town a little bit earlier mm -hmm. and bought some Ooh. shrimp. Look at that. That's that so French settlement sausage in there. Sausage that looks like, is that the green onion French settlement? I see a lot of green onion in there. I think sausage. it is. I think oh, we put I the green onion in it. here. Um, I'm excited. I, I always like celery in mine. Uh -huh. Some do, some don't. I see you, you got know? a whole onion in there. Yes, yes. And lots of people go with mushrooms and you mm -hmm. can just go on and on and on about what they're going to put, put in potatoes here. potatoes in there. Yep. That's my favorite is a potato. Okay, y'all. Here's what we're going to do. She's going to get this balling mm -hmm. and you'll never be able to see the separation, but she's going to get yeah. this balling and uh, we're going to taste some shrimp and we got some shrimp cocktail coming. So y'all hang on. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 
by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information, dctofla.com. The new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark, located at the Port Vincent Bridge, is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style pressed po'boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Kara. We um, we decorated some of these bald shrimp here. Oh, this here is so and, uh, fancy! Now you you were gonna taste them. I am. I'm gonna taste. This is the bald, and it peeled so easily. The peel just kind of fell off of it. And I want to say this probably wasn't a fresh shrimp, and it's called an IQF, instantly mm -hmm. quick frozen, mm. and that's where that salt comes mm. in. But if you do it that way, it tends to work pretty good. The it's real the good. pineapple in there was. Um, that's just a little treat. Mm -hmm. That's but very good. but next year they'll have something different in there. It'll be something. Who knows? Be veg all. <laughs> you don't know. Okay, y'all. I I haven't eaten a shrimp cocktail in mm -hmm. a long time. But but it was tradition when I was younger that you, when you went out to eat, boy, that mm -hmm. was oyster cocktail or shrimp cocktail. You you got down with that. Mm -hmm. Um. The cocktail is also known as seafood sauce. The cocktail sauce itself. Okay. Um, Cold or at room temperature, used as a condiment with seafood cocktails, mm -hmm. okay? The name often credited for the sauce is a British celebrity called Fanny Craddock, and her recipe was in 1967. Hmm. So that, okay. that's when I was born. So oh. this has been around 50-something years, I'd okay. have to say. Um, varieties in North America usually consist of ketchup, mm -hmm. Chili sauce, horseradish, lemon juice, Worcestershire, and Tabasco, and that's, and and they say it can be Tabasco or Louisiana or yeah. um, Crystal, mm -hmm. you know. So, the, the, to give it a little kick. Yeah, um, there's not much yeah. more you can do to this. You can mm -hmm. you can start from scratch. You can do it. Um, most people like a cracker with it, mm -hmm. dipping it, eating the celery, and drinking their drink with it. Mm -hmm. You know, but um. I, I want to show something pretty cool that I'd built a while back. Uh, some guys from one of the plants, and I wouldn't mention a name of a plant if I had to. Okay. Um, they take a hot, well, water heater element and you connect it and it's plugged in and it's just water and you put your seafood in there now. <laughs> your water's in okay. over the top of it uh -huh. and um, you can ball probably anything but crawfish because um, the timing on crawfish yeah. would be really bad but yeah. I've, I've used it already we bought some turkey necks um, oh, we bought some potatoes and corn and um, mm -hmm. it works I, it goes up to 225 and I'm sure you can change the element to go a little bit hotter but yeah it's something neat um, it, it was there. it was fun to do to create it uh, you put a lid on it put holes in it let okay. her eat mm -hmm. Very interesting. All right, y'all. This was delicious. This is good stuff, this but so next good. we got your stuff going. Shrimp and grits. Y'all hang right. on. Well, Kara, looks like uh, everybody's quiet out there eating their shrimp cocktail. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm ready to try it. While this bacon is going, oh. I'm going to try gonna do it. You're going to do it? I'm going to go in. All right. I'm going to go in. Let's see. 
Mm. That's so good. Ain't, that's so good. It, that's one of them flavors. Mm -hmm. You know, it says that at room temperature or refrigerated. Mm -hmm. What if you heated it up? I think just it'd, saying. I think it'd still be good. Just saying. I they told me good. I couldn't heat mayonnaise. I did it. <laughs> you heated mayonnaise. I did it. Oh did my it. gosh, that's a, that's a whole nother show. I know. We're gonna talk about that. Well, tell me what you're cooking. You got the good stuff this time. I, I hope so. So this is just an, a very simple wing night shrimp and grits. So I've got about eight strips of bacon, and I'm just gonna render that down to get the fat. Because I mean, you can't beat shrimp, you know, cooked in bacon fat. Right. You know anything cooked in bacon fat. <laughs> so I'm gonna render this down. I'm gonna get it kind of crispy and brown. And you know, I, I feel so bad because I'm coming with frozen shrimp. Yeah, but I'm gonna tell you, this is the <laughs> weeknight mom yes. coming home from work. Absolutely. And Daddy don't have to peel the shrimp either. There so we go. happy they did this for there us. There you go. So we're gonna render this down. We're gonna get it nice and brown and crispy. We're gonna lay it out. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add that shrimp to it. And you really don't have to cook shrimp that long. You just kinda wanna cook it till it's pink, but that's our, that's still frozen. So it's gonna give off a lot of water, but that's okay, cause shrimp and grits makes a gravy. You want a little gravy on the grits. So it's gonna render out some water. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with that. And then to that, we're gonna add a little blackening seasoning. A oh wow! Garlic, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. So it's going to be pretty flavorful. Well, cool. I, it don't look like a whole bunch of ingredients it's, as you were. It's really not. It's really not. There's some, um, you know, there's some for the grits. You want to make your grits nice and creamy. You want them cheesy, because this blackening seasoning is really salty. Oh. You want something that's going to counteract that salt. Okay. So, and the blackening seasoning is so pretty. It's just so tempting to just shake it on there. Is that our but buddy don't, uh, don't, don't. Perdome, possibly? Well, this is this is Tony. Okay. Tony Everybody got a black and season got, yeah. now. So yeah, this is just and I added a little, a couple of herbs to it, a little uh, oregano and a little basil. Oh wow! But don't overdo it on this. Don't. I did it. I did it by accident the first time I made shrimp and grits, and my poor husband. It was salty he act, shrimp. Well, he, he acted like he liked it. He's, he's a good husband. And then you tasted it. And, and then like, I did, and then I had to world? apologize. <laughs> I had to apologize. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely don't overdo it. But you don't have to necessarily use blackening seasoning. You can use Cajun seasoning. You can use Uncle Larry's if you want to, just whatever your flavor is. That cooked quick. Really it really, quick. really did. It really did. And you want to have about four teaspoons of bacon fat, you know, because again, you can never have too much. Don't bacon fat, don't you know? don't get rid of all of it. Don't get rid of no. Never get rid of all of it. And then I'm just gonna let this out and let it start to to drain just a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that shrimp, and it's gonna make some noise. That's okay. But we're gonna go from there. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about shrimp and grits while you're doing that. Okie dokie. Um, shrimp and grits originates in the low country of the coastal Carolinas and Georgia and it was traditionally a breakfast dish. Okay, I can see that with the grits, you know. Exactly. In 1982, Chef Bill Neal of North Carolina, he may be the creator. Okay. Okay. In 1985, Craig Claiborne from the Nor uh, New York Times mm -hmm. went there and ate some of Neil's shrimp and grits, mm -hmm. published his recipe in his widely read publication, and it spread like wildfire. Oh, Everybody man. wanted shrimp and grits back mm -hmm. then. Um, grits is a porridge made from bald cornmeal. Mm hmm. Now, um, not everybody knows that because when I read that, I'm like, that comes from cornmeal? But um, right. the grits originate. Now, I like that sound. I was going to say, I told you it's going to make some noise. Let her eat. Yeah, we're going to let it roll. Uh, grits originate from the Native American tribe, mm -hmm. the Muscogee. The okay. Muscogee. Muscogee, okay. Gotcha. Um, and they're the ones who started it, but the American colonists learned from the Native Americans and it became an American staple after that. Gotcha. And you know, I've, I've seen grits done so many different ways. You know, I've actually seen people eating sugar. Well, when I grew up, we ate yellow grits with mm -hmm. sugar. Okay. Now we ate our white grits with breakfast, but like dessert, but we grits ate yellow with grits sugar. with sugar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's how my grandmother used to eat them, was with sugar. 
which was unusual. And I, n I never really liked grits until I got older because it's just the consistency, you know, it's a consistency. Right. So, right. so I've got this. This is going to kind of cook down just a little bit. And you can see it's already letting out a lot of water. Yes, indeed. Yes. So well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we take a little break? All right. You get this going, and we're going to get to taste some in a minute. So y'all hang on. All right, Kara. Man, everybody looks uh, like they don't eat enough food out there. I we might get so. to keep this for ourselves. Oh, I'm going to hide it. <laughs> I'm going to hide it. Well, there's two cool things. Um, number one, I'm going to talk about, this is the leftovers from a shrimp boil, okay. which is the potatoes, the shrimp. You can put the uh, celery in there. Mm -hmm. We took some of that French settlement sausage and mm -hmm. put in there with yep. the green onion. I believe the green onion's in this one. I'm almost sure. Nope, it's the mild. It's the oh, mild okay. in this one. Okay. And then what I did, instead of taking our good old boiled shrimp, I mm -hmm. took a packet of shrimp like you had from mm -hmm. the frozen section frozen shrimp, yeah. and dumped that in there after I dumped the oil from the sausage mm -hmm. and then put everybody together. Um, and I'm going to say everybody together. I put a stick of butter, the sausage, the shrimp, I put a half of uh, four ounces of pet milk, and I put this cream of shrimp cream in there, shrimp. and that kicked it up a notch oh, right there. Okay. I, I gotta say. So you add all that together mm -hmm. with some Uncle Larry's, mm -hmm. and I already had the potatoes in the pan, mm -hmm. so I already had that on the stove, put it together, put it in there, and I put the green onions on top, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to taste it to all see right. what in the well, world happened. Twist my arm here. Well, I, well <laughs> somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to taste mm -hmm. it. That's it's good. what it, it's hard to beat what was there already, but it's hardy. This just kind of kicks it up a notch, mm -hmm. and then that evaporated milk in there brings it up. And I'm gonna tell you, we done this last night, mm -hmm. the night before, and uh, the wife was telling me she said, "You better write that down." So I did, and yeah, um, it's very good. That's a keeper. Definitely. That's a keeper. Yep, those potatoes are good. So the other one, my aunt mm -hmm. Gay and Rook um, wanted to cook something for one of our shows okay. and um, she tells me this recipe goes from three different recipes that's mm -hmm. created into one okay so it's it, actually it's really simple i'm gonna tell you if, if you go to reading this there's a lot to read but uh. you take angel food cake mm -hmm. okay you got two pounds of strawberries two cups of sugar and the cool whip okay, okay? and what you're doing is mixing this all together and at mm -hmm. the end while you taste in this, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you about the end. <laughs> all right. She says, uh, you keep layering it all the way to the top of the bowl. Mm -hmm. And then you put extra strawberries and juice in a bowl if somebody wants a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So um, y'all write in the name, because we don't have a name. It's uh, three oh. recipes in one. Mm -hmm. So anybody out there that wants to kind of send to Facebook or let us know what you think the name of that would mm -hmm. be. Mm. It, it could be a dump cake. It could be a strawberry cake. It could be it's angel really food fresh. cake with everybody you like on top of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, the Cool Whip probably is the kicker, but I don't, it's the strawberries. It's, it's the, the strawberries for me. It's just that that sugar is just kind of macerated them down and that juice has just like really soaked that that cake. Well, it's kind of spongy, you know. Right. This it's time really of the year, we at the, we're not at the peak of strawberries, but strawberries are just but starting coming. to coming in yeah. right here, and uh, mm -hmm. I got a feeling that's fresh strawberries oh, on there. You can't beat Louisiana strawberries. Yes, indeed. You really can. Well, that's while delicious. she's snacking on that, we got one more for you. We got the drink we've been drinking tonight. It's salty dog, so y'all come right back. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Crawfish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, 
and no more mushy crawfish using the old outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Kara. Man, I... That's you enough. Full? You full yet? Man, that's too much. I got something leaned against where I'm gonna oh, fall goodness. over right now. Oh my goodness. Salty dog. Yep. All right. So this will help you digest all that shrimp. All right. All right. So a salty dog. Um, and we kind of made a little modification to the salty dog because a little earlier in the test kitchen we tried it with the salt. We found that we like sugar better. So this this is a modification. We're gonna call this the sugar dog. So all I've done is I've taken a lemon wedge and I've run it around the edge of this glass and I've put it into some sugar. So when you sip, you're going to get that really sweet kick of sugar. And so I have two ounces, two and a third ounces of ruby red grapefruit juice. Now again, you can use whatever kind of grapefruit juice you want. You can use the ruby red, which is sweeter, or you can use the yellow grapefruit, which I prefer, which is a little bit more sour, which I like. So I'm gonna put my last little ounce in here, and these little solo cups are perfect. Well, to measure. let me tell you. Grapefruit originates from Barbados. It's 90% water, 8% mm -hmm. carbohydrates, and 1% protein. Okay? Okay. Gin, and this is good stuff, y'all. Mm -hmm. Gin, the predominant flavor comes from juniper berries, mm -hmm. and it can be traced back to the 11th century. The Benedictine, the Benedictine, Benedictine monks, monks uh. in southern Italy. They were making medicines back then. Oh, well, this so, is medicine for a lot of stuff. It is. I'll just let it you is. know that right there. So <laughs> this is one ounce of gin, and it calls for one and a third. So if you go into this, about the third part of this little, this first little stripe in here, that's, that's your third. third. That's your third. <laughs> yep. So about one, because, you know, we want it to be medicinal well, now, we gotta right? we got to be technical. Be the monks here. did it. We can do well, it. Well, I, I know. I know. That was a long it, time it's, ago, it's, too. It's blessed. So we're going to go ahead and add that third. And then we're going to add a little bit of this squeeze lemon, a little. little squeeze there. And we're going to just slide that in there. So is that for me? Let you try. Yeah, sure. Well, let me see. All right. See what I'm gonna you think? I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. All right. Sugar dog, y'all. I was gonna say you gotta get the sugar. You can't get that with the straw. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, I think he likes it, y'all. I don't know. Well, thank y'all so much for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we will see y'all next week.